So let's continue our discussion on what exactly a freestyle cipher is all about. Uh, as you can see on your screens, the freestyle cipher looks like a complicated kind of a cipher. But trust me, it is not that difficult to understand. Once you get the hang of it, the steps are quite repetitive. Okay, so let's focus on the encryption side first, followed by the decryption. So what exactly happens in Fiesel structure is, why it is called as Fiesel structure or Fiesel cipher, is basically it is not a specific algorithm. It is basically a structure which uh, forms the basis or which forms the skeleton for many different block ciphers. DES or data encryption standards is one of the uh, most specific or most direct examples which is based on facial structure that is going to be our next topic next video okay so let's focus on the encryption phase first what exactly happens in the facial architecture or the facial cipher whatever be the uh, plain text size I'm just assuming I'm just taking a number which is quite popular so I'm just taking a number 64 so whatever be the size of uh, the plain text for example 64 bits that is divided into two equal sized halves that is the left half over here and the right half over here so these are the two halves of the plain text now what happens is in each round the right half of the block r goes through unchanged as you can see over here there is a line drawn with maroon color it signifies that the right half of the round zero goes unchanged and becomes the left half of the round one so to keep it simple what i will do is i will write the round numbers over here round zero and round one for example so again i'm repeating the right half of a particular uh, round remains unchanged and goes as the left half of the second round or the next round so over here uh, the right half of the round zero that is r0 goes unchanged and becomes the left half of the round one okay so what happens is after this round zero and round one r0 becomes l1 is it clear so that is the very first step that happens next what happens is l0 now what happens over here to l0 now l0 is one of the inputs to an operation that operation is nothing but an xor operation now what are the other inputs to this xor operation the XOR operation has a direct input in the form of a function. So what happens is there is a function block for each of the rounds. As you can see, there is a function block for each of the rounds. So the function expects two inputs in each round. The first input is nothing but the current right half that is Rn. It may be R1, R2, R3, R16, whatever. So the current right half of the particular round along with the second input, which is the current key for that round. So uh, to keep it simple, the function takes two inputs. First is R0, that is the right half of that round and the key corresponding to that round K0. So internally, there might be any operation happening as we saw in the previous video also. If you have not checked the block cipher modes of operation video, you can just uh, check that. You will get a clear understanding of what this function is all about. So inside that function, there could be any operations happening. It could be substitution. It could be permutation. So to keep it simple, S stands for substitution. This is the core of any cipher algorithm and P stands for permutation. So what happens is there might be n number of substitution operations or permutation operations. And after those, we get some output for that function. That output over here, that is over here, goes as an input to that XOR operation. So in short, the XOR operation takes two inputs. One is nothing but L0 and the second input is nothing but the output of that function. And whatever is the output of that XOR operation, that becomes the right one, that is R1 for the next round. So I hope it is clear. So in the same fashion, now we are in round one. So what happens in round one is uh, this R, that is this right half, will now remain unchanged and it will go as the left half for the next round. So I can say that what will be L2 now? L2 is nothing but it is R1. And similarly, what is R2? R2 is nothing but the output of the XOR operation. That is, I can say that output of XOR operation means over here we are getting something called as L1, right? So L1 XOR function, inside that function we are having two inputs. That input is nothing but what? It is K1, comma R1. 
so this is nothing but your r2 so i hope this makes things clear and this goes on till the nth round ideally in the case of data encryption standards you will uh, come to know later that we take n as 16 so if you are starting with r0 we'll go till r16 that is if n is 16 we will start from 0 till 16 because it is rn plus 1 and ln plus 1 so this entire process goes on and at the end we get 32 bits of lpt and 32 bits of rpt when we concatenate that we get a 64 bit ka cipher text that is what is the output and the exact reverse happens in the case of the decryption process the decryption process will take this as the initial input that goes over here and the entire process is repeated and at the end if everything goes well we get the output that should correspond to the initial plain text so that is how a uh, feastal cipher works so i hope you got the understanding of what exactly is a feastal cipher if you want a clearer picture of what the inner rounds look like it looks like this it is just it is just the same diagram i have just uh, drilled down to show what exactly happens so we can say it is the internal diagram of each round in detail i can say that each round can be summarized as this so i can say that l1 and r1 these are the two values which we need to find for the next round so what exactly happens is l1 is nothing but your r0 it is very simple whereas r1 it is r1 over here it is a combination of xor and functions so what happens is r1 is nothing but l0 xor function which takes two inputs that is r0 and k0 and this is nothing but the values corresponding to each round so if we want to generalize it it is nothing but ln is nothing but r of n minus 1 similarly rn is nothing but l of n minus 1 xor function involving r n minus 1 comma k n minus 1 so that is how a feastal cipher works so i hope you got the understanding of this feasible structure if you are uh, keen to learn more about information security cryptography and cyber security you are most welcome to join my channel you are most welcome to subscribe to it do share it with your friends leave your comments in the comment section and stay connected